Hey everybody, it's Mrs. C. And today I am coming to you with a video on basic interval notation. And so there we go, yeah. So while I'm doing this uh, little video on basic interval notation, I'm actually trying out a new platform. This one's called, um, what am I using? This is called Explain Everything. So we're gonna see it's got a lot more bells and whistles. So I'm gonna try not to get too distracted while I'm doing this video, but it could happen. So it's a good thing we're doing basic interval notation so that if I do get distracted, it's not uh, too complicated. So what is interval notation? Well, simply put, interval notation is just another notation that we can use to express um, infinite solutions or more than one solution, say. And let me give you an example. So if we use our basic set notation, that would look something like this. X is less than or equal to five. And this notation came in after we learned about notation like x equals five. So what's the difference really between x is less than or equal to five and x is five? Well, on a number line, right, intuitively speaking, if we had zero, we would have five over to the right, five units from zero on the right. And um, x equals five would be something really simple like a solid point on the five, indicating that the value of whatever you're looking for is, is five. Well, when we come over to this, x is less than or equal to five, we note that the value of five is not only x, but it's also all of the values, including all of the infinite negative values that fall to the left of five, and including five itself. So pretty much any number, say for example, negative five, Ooh, sorry about that. Say, for example, negative 5 or 1 or even, say, negative 1 million. All of those infinite values. And we probably know enough about um, the number line to know that there's an infinite amount of values between any section of the graph. They could just go on infinitely forever. So our inequality is really representing more than one value, simply put. So then what would be interval notation? Well, let me show you. If we had the set notation, x is less than or equal to five, and we had already graphed it, and it looked like this. This is something that you've already done. With the zero in the middle, five is to the right. If we were to graph that, we said we would have a closed circle shading into negative infinity. And what's over here on the right is positive infinity. Interval notation is just another way to write that. So you just have to learn the proper usage of the notation. Interval notation is read from left to right. So let me just show you. And I think in order to help me show you, I'm just going to use a, well, let's use the force. Oh yeah. So. What we have here is from reading from left to right, starting out here in negative infinity. Interval notation will tell me where I start, which is in negative infinity, again, from left to right, and it'll progress all the way to where I'm supposed to stop right there at the five. So one more time, using the force, that's what I'm talking about, from negative infinity coming all the way through and stopping at five. Well, now that seems pretty simple, right? But now we have to write it. So if I'm going to come from negative infinity, remember we said, and I'm going to progress all the way to five, I'm going to write it this way in interval notation. I'm going to open with a parenthesis and I'm going to close with a bracket. Now, I know I blew your mind there for a second, so let me just explain. Whenever we are not counting, well, let me say that backwards. Whenever we are counting a value, say for example, I wanna count the five, I use a closed interval. So our closed intervals, let's go to another page. Okay, this is gonna be a miracle that this video comes out right. I'm trying to go back to, so let me see, how can I do this?
Let me try one. Oh, I did. Okay. I didn't even know it changed. Okay, so if I was to look at this one more time, I would see that I was an open interval right here at negative infinity, and I proceeded on until I got to 5, and look here. The reason why I have a bracket is 5 was closed. It had the closed circle, and so I ended with a bracket. So again, open intervals are parentheses, closed intervals are brackets. Now you might be asking, why did you put a parenthesis on infinity? Well, infinity, either negative or positive, are always um, open intervals. You can't contain infinity, if you think about it. There's no containing infinity because it goes on forever. So to contain it means to enclose it or to capture it, say, like we did with the 5. We included 5. Well, you can't include infinity because it keeps expanding. And there you have it. All right, let's try another page. So what I'd like to do now is just a little bit of practice. So if I was to give you a graph and I was to maybe say shade and do it something a little bit different and say I did closed and I shaded this direction. How would you write that in interval notation? And also, how would you write it in set notation? You should know how to do that. Think about it for a second. Pause the video if you need to. All right, let's go with the basic set notation. That's something you already know. I'm going to put it down here. We know that we have an x and we know that we have a negative 2. The direction, or excuse me, the question would be, are my values, these that are shading right up here, are my x's, because x is the shade, are my x's either or greater than the negative 2 or are they less than? Well, which direction are you shading? You're shading into positive infinity. So if you shade towards positive, your numbers are always getting bigger. And if you shade towards the negatives, your numbers are getting smaller. It's as easy as that. So which direction? I'm saying that my values of x are actually greater than negative 2. And that would be that. And because it's a closed interval... I want to have a line underneath it. That's how we show closed intervals in set notation. Now, what about interval notation? Really easy. Remember how we went from left to right. So we start at the left side of the graph where I have my negative 2. I have a bracket because we said it's a closed interval. And I proceed into infinity where I close with an open interval. And that's it. That is how you do graph how you do interval, and how you do set. Let's try another one. So say, for example, I'm going to give you zero, and I'm going to have you shade, um, here's a one, open, and let's shade in that direction. So how about we do set first? We know we have x values, they're the shades, we know that I am starting at 1. The question then becomes, are my x values greater than 1 or less than 1? Well, in this case, they're shading towards negative infinity, meaning they are less than 1. So my x values are less than 1. Are they closed or open? Am I including 1 or not? No, I am not including 1. There's an open circle. That means I'm going to not have that line underneath the inequality. Now, for interval notation, traveling from left to right, I am going from negative infinity, keeping it an open interval parenthesis, comma, going all the way to 1, where I have another open interval. So I am going to be closing with a parenthesis. Now, sometimes you have graphs that look like this. Now you won't have them when you're doing basic inequalities, but you will have graphs that look like this when you start to do what we call compound inequalities. So a shout out, hey, any of my peeps out there that are doing compound inequalities, you might be having graphs that look like this in your final answer. How do you express those in interval notation? Well, the good news is uh, they're the easiest ones 
I not there the interval notation is the easiest part of doing compound inequalities. So um, when you get to this part, you're gonna just be happy you made it this far. So let's look at that top graph. And I made these a little too close together, but we'll just have to deal. So if we look at that top graph going from left to right, all you do is read it when you do interval notation. And so from the left side, as I progress, hang on, where's my where is my pointer? Let me find it. Let's see. Here it is. Okay. As we progress, oh yeah, from left to right, we start at the negative 10 and we go all the way, this time not to infinity, I stop at 7. So you see what our shade is. It's the distance between them, but it doesn't go outside of that section. So how would we actually express that in interval notation? Well, we would say exactly that. I'm starting at negative 10 in a closed interval. So bracket, negative 10, comma, all the way to, but excluding, parenthesis. Oh, da -da 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 -da. those of you who have seen my videos know what that means. Do you know what that means? I'm, well, I'm trying to shut it off. Stop. Stop. It means it's time to wake up. So anyway, or in this case, it's time to stop and get ready for work. So here we go. One more time just to back up. Lost my focus there for a moment. Turn that off. We see that we progressed starting at and including negative 10, going all the way to 7, but an open interval excluding 7. So going right up to 7, but not including it. If we come down to the one below it, we see we have a break in the graph, okay? Where's my pointer again? Um, I'm sorry, I know you don't need the pointers, but you got to admit the pointer is just cool. So you see here this break in the graph. It means that my values of x do not include that break. Now my values of x will come from negative infinity go to negative 10, stop, but don't include negative 10, and then we'll gonna jump over to seven, don't include seven, and then continue on with all the values that are to the right of seven or the infinite positive values. How the heck are we supposed to show that jump or that break? Well, in interval notation, it's actually quite easy, but we need one more notation. We need something to say that there's a break in the graph, and we use a little symbol, U. We use the, the symbol U that stands for union, and I'm pretty much just saying I'm bringing these two values onto one graph, but there's a break in them. That's pretty simple. So we come from negative infinity. We proceed to negative 10, but we stop and not include it. Then there's a break in my graph, which I use the U for, and then I start back up again. I don't include 7, even though I start there, and then I proceed on into infinity. And that is how you show a break in the graph with this little U symbol standing for union. And that's it. I mean, that's real. That's interval notation. It is a basic. It's an, it's a intuition, so to speak. It's not practice. What I would recommend, since this is a short video, is well, short by my standards, is to just practice. Take graphs and write them in interval notation. Find yourself a nice bunch of, of practice on interval notation and just get into a habit of writing everything you do in interval notation, not just set notation. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope that this actually makes it onto YouTube because I've never used this program before. I'm loving the I'm loving the lightsaber. First of all, right there is worth it to me. So hopefully I can figure out how to upload this. It's probably going to take another couple minutes. Um, if all goes well, you know where I'm going to see you. That's right. I'm going to see you on the flip side. So there it is. All right. So our closed intervals, let me type that for you. Okay, so our closed intervals um, in set notation are solid circles, right? And our open intervals are open circles. Well, when we use interval notation, we don't use the closed and the open circle. We use 
for closed intervals, a bracket, either direction, just depends on what looks better, and an open interval would be a parenthesis. So if I was going to close an interval, meaning I would have wanted to contain that value, I would use, say, a bracket. And if I wanted to leave that interval open, meaning go up to it but not include it, I would use a parenthesis. So let me go back a page. 